fuck happened here? I think she locked me out. Hold on. You did? Yeah, I got locked out. Oh, got old old a Andy Bear Ghani. He's coming over. We're gonna, uh, gonna do a little cooking in my lovely backyard here, and uh, we got some some nice fish that we picked up. I haven't seen Andy since the virus pandemic broke out, which would have been, I guess, in March maybe. I haven't seen them other than some Zoom meetings. I've seen a lot of Andy in a little, you know. Uh, two inch square, four inch square, sometimes an eight inch square, depending on the size of the meeting. And he's always the one that's got bad Wi-Fi. So waiting on Andy, nothing, nothing new there. <laughs> ain't seen him in six months, ain't too much change already, I'll tell you that much. There's always stuff over here. Oh, I hear. oh Andy Baragani. How you doing, handsome? Can we do that? Yeah. You can do that, right? Yeah, yeah that's or um, where was I? Stay right there. I forget where I was, and they people were just doing this. It was like, like, that's good. Like, hey, bud, that's good to see you. You're just talking to yourself. Yeah, like, you stay there. I'll stay here. There's nothing, we'll, nothing new about that. We'll keep our six, you know. Yeah. I don't have a tape measure, but uh, this looks like about a six foot. So anyway, we got the table. I got a nice little pop-up grill. I'll set that up, and we got some really cool fish. Got them sent over from Greenpoint uh, Fish and Lobster. Love them. Oh, yeah, over so in Greenpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, some of my favorite fish. You know, not ones that you see you know, at your local monger. But, uh, you know, I got some really nice bluefish. You love bluefish. Love like. bluefish. And I'll tell you why. I grew up catching bluefish with my, with my dad. They have like an oily, softer kind of yeah, texture. Yeah, very buttery. And they're just really they're full of nutrients themselves. Since you love uh, bluefish, why don't you take bluefish? I'm going to take the porgy. Perfect. I'll use the flat top. I want to you do a nice flat top. It's propane. It's a nice. It's yeah, nice. It feels right. It's like I a feel like plancha. a nice little uh, porgy on the plancha. Ooh, yours is gonna be good. Well, you, you like the bluefish. It's so gonna be easier to flip. It is gonna be easier to flip. <laughs> that's for sure. But there's, I got tricks for grilling whole fish on the grill. Just let it go. No, you don't let it go. Well, not burn it, but I mean, no, like, no, no. let it. We'll, we'll get there. But all right, I'm gonna get this little pop-up grill. It's been an active summer. A lot of outdoorsy stuff. Same here. I was out in the southwest. For like three weeks. Oh yeah. Look at that bad boy, huh? I put it right on my picnic table. It's got nice setup. I love it, and it comes with this little tote bag. It looks great. I it up. I keep all my tools in and it. The tote bag looks good. Woo! So I've been out on Long Island since March. I had a mini road Where? trip from Long Island to the Southwest. I had a drove. I didn't take a plane. Nice. Anymore. Yeah, it was, a great... it was a good ride. We had a nice ride uh, there. Nothing bad happened. Big car. Nothing bad happened. Let's see. Uh, I was cooking a potafaro, and then the backsplash of the oven fell and knocked the pot. And it... where were you? In the kitchen. And in a house. <laughs> uh, on Long Island. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, right. Yeah. And the pot fell, and it spilled all over here, and I had a second degree burn. So from like my hip Scar. down to my knee. Um, there, yes, 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 there is Ooh, scarring. it was a big blister? Brad, the, it was like this big. Did you have to get a skin graft? I didn't have to get a skin graft. I mean, it was, the, it was the second most painful thing that has ever happened to me. It got infected? It didn't get infected, and then I went to the doctors, and they just removed the, the dead skin. And then it took about... Um, you left it on? The dead, you left the big... So what, it was a big blister and then it fell? It had to... Bl they said either you could leave it on... Great, or so let's cook some fish. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Hell of a show. Look at that. That's great. Oh, this is nice and this seasoned nice. too. This You're going to be like... Just like... I got a nice little flame going. They're burning. They're not good enough to cook on yet really, but I'm going to dump them in and I'm going to add a little bit of more charcoal, get them out of the chimney, get a good coal. Get a good bed going. I'm gonna make a tare for my porgy, okay? Okay. I'm gonna make a little like soy reduction of sorts. Sounds wonderful. All right. What are you gonna do? What's your flavor? Hold on a second. You need that much, really, for one fish? You don't wanna feel it's probably a fire hazard, like hell. Ow, my eyes! Uh, Shut up, Andy. Uh -huh. And everyone thinks bluefish, you know, this big junky bycatch kind of garbage fish. But man, they're, they're delicious, especially if you treat them well as soon as you catch them. But as soon as you catch them, you got to get the blood out. Because like when you get fish that smells fishy or bad, or, or especially something like a bluefish where it just kind of, it's all the blood that's in the meat. Any fish that has a higher oil content 
it's just more susceptible to be going bad more quickly. It has a shorter shelf life. So it takes a little bit more prep and care. And yeah. the goal is to kind of remove as much blood as possible in the kind of quickest, most seamless way, both for the fish and for the consumer. Yep. One of my favorite fish sandwiches that I've ever had was with bluefish. Slathered with aioli, a ton of herbs. When done right, when it's done delicious. Right. Perfect example, for the longest time, mackerel. Little Atlantic uh, mackerel, little pinker mackerel. It was garbage though. You know, growing up, that was bait. Turns out they're on menus. They're, the other time. cultures have been eating them for years. Beautiful. You know, so I love small mackerel. Small little oily fish like sardines or everything eats them for a reason because they're delicious. And, and they're, they're good for you. They're full of nutrients. Yep. Yep. So we're going to cook some. It's going to be wonderful. Hand me the nicest bluefish, okay. Andy. And these are like my favorite size to eat bluefish. I even like them a little smaller. They're so beautiful. Beautiful fish. That's what I'm talking about. How could anyone call that garbage? And I, Andy, there's so much fun to catch. One day we're gonna go fishing. I hope so. You know, I have to admit, I haven't been a. Uh, these these. I've fish, been fishing these... once. Oh, oh, Andy, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna. You're gonna be addicted. I'm gonna get the uh, tare going. It's gonna be a mix of soy sauce, garlic, ginger, chili, uh, rice vinegar. If you got some mirin, that would be great. If not, I might throw some sugar, reduce it, get it a little bit glazy, uh, and then make a few slits. Maybe two for my fish per side. I like the slits, you know, you get in there more. I like the slits too. It gets, lets the salt in there, lets the heat in there, it yeah, cooks quicker, yeah. it cooks more evenly in a way. My problem, I'm a little concerned with the slits sometimes, it's harder to flip on a grill. With the bluefish, I'm just gonna get some of the perilla seeds, I'm gonna shove those in there, maybe a little lemon slices, uh, maybe a crushed clove of garlic, maybe a little, little three finger pinch of that jazz, throw okay. it in there. I see. And then I'm gonna oil it and then just keep it high here and just hopefully flip it once. Okay. I'll flip it when it tells me it wants to be flipped. I'm gonna wash my hands. Yeah, go get, and there's a saucepan down there too. There's all kinds of shit. Oh, look at bee. Look at these beautiful flowers. Me and I bee are gonna share. Yeah, and then I'll do a little lime. And then I'm just gonna pack that into the cavity with those two slices. So these are already been gutted and scaled. Just putting some salt on there. I'll put a pinch of that in there. And I'm just gonna pour some oil on it. We'll pop that baby. Hey, what? There's no saucepan here. Let me go wash my hands. I got a little sink down there in the basement. I'll be back. Keep an eye on the bluefish, Kevin. Keep an eye on the bluefish, okay? If it catches on fire, drop the camera and get the fish. It's more important. All right, Brad. I, I saw a saucepan, but it was too big, so I need a smaller one. Let me go wash my hands and get your, your stuff. Table 17. Do you make any slits? That's, that's good. It's good. He's kind of going for like a Mediterranean thing. I get it. I still think he should have done like at least three slits, but it looks beautiful. It's going to be great. I'm just going to make some slits just so I can get that seasoning and that glaze in there. I flip it and do the same. Clean hand, salt, get in there all over in the cavity. Here, Andy, here's some options, pal. Oh, thank you. Amazing. I'm gonna add a quarter cup of soy. Some folks will probably hate me for this, but I picked some, uh, some wild little grapes, some Concord grapes have been growing here for way before I've been here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix those up into a little nibble too. I'm just gonna chop up some of these herbs. I got the perilla, some mint, some basil, some basil. I got a couple little mini plum tomatoes that I were growing. And I'm just gonna chop them up, a little oil, a little garlic, maybe a little ginger, maybe a little honey, we'll see. It's looking good. The skin's picking up some color. You know, it's got, it's got to cook through the bone before we flip it, you know, on the one side. I want it to be just about all the way cooked on one side, just about, say about 90%. Yeah, you go like, what, 70%? What? 90%? Um, maybe, oh, oh no, picture the bone spine as like the divide. Uh huh. Yeah. I want the one, the first half to be 90%. Yeah. So yeah, around total fish around 70. Yeah. If that makes yeah. any sense to any yeah. of you. I'm going to, I'm going to turn the heat up a little. And we're going to just reduce this a bit until it's like slightly thicken. Ooh, it smells good. It's an oily fish. So I, it can kind of take a like a slow roast and let the outside get nice and crispy. It can kind of take a little heat, a little, little temperature. 
I'm gonna just slick my fish with some oil. That smell good? Yeah. All right, fish back. The fuck are you doing with blueberries? <laughs> fuck, man. They're Concord grapes. No, they're not. Yeah. Where? They grow, they grow on the fence right there. What's your problem? No, nothing. What would Concord grapes ever do to you, Andy? No, I love Concord grapes. Don't sound like it. No, I'm just kidding, but I know they're fantastic, right? A little tough lime, Kev, a little tough lime. Sometimes I like to slice it up a little. Yeah, but, you know, bust up that fibery oh, well. kind of stuff. And then, oil, okay, a little bit of this good stuff. Oh, heavens. Pinch of salt, look at me, I don't care. Pinch of that, woo! Oh, here we go. My little pepper mixture. How you doing, Andy? I'm good. The skin like tore a little bit. Oh, looking real good, bud. Look at that meat. God, what an underrated fish, I'll tell you what. A fish of this size, so I think it's been on there about 10, 15 minutes now. Yeah. And really, you just want to watch the skin. Don't force it. If it forces it, it'll start to tear. Yeah, mine tore, so. You just want to get a nice little one over. Oh, what? Voilà. We'll let that cook a little. And you know, it takes up this That's size beautiful. about 25 minutes. That's perfect. Check this out, Andy. That looks pretty good. So the little, little, little spot that didn't get crispy, I'd get a nice little flat coal. Puts a little color right where, there, you, know, where you needed it. It's a good trick. We did it on It's Alive. My buddy Brian Merkel told me about it. You usually play with a smaller one. Okay, so I'm gonna make like a scallion cilantro herb salad, and the tari has reduced, so I'm gonna put that, drizzle that over the fish. I got some fresh grapefruit. I like the bitterness and the acidity from the grapefruit, and squeeze that over the fish rather than just lemon or lime. We have this like pink peppercorn situation that Brad made, obviously. Woo, pink peppercorn, baby. Cooking in the test kitchen and having like my fellow food editors and coworkers just taste things and ask us questions and having that conversation I think it's so essential to our jobs and it's been the hardest thing since the pandemic. I think like now it's like we go through tastings but no one's tasting our food and it's, it's very difficult to kind of develop recipes without having that kind of conversation regularly in the kitchen. So it's just tricky doing it virtually. This one's just about ready, bud. All right, coming in. Oh yeah, oh, we got a little stickage on that bottom, but. You know, it's Great. like it gets a good crisp, but it's also so oily that it kind of almost like, unless you keep it real hot for a while, it almost like can like self-baste itself a little. But it's almost like a giant, it eats like a giant grilled sardine. Look at that skin. Yeah. All right, Andy, these fish look beautiful. And the whole fish, what I love, people get so freaked out about the bones. What? But no, well, the bones, they just kind of fall. If you cook it nice, it just falls right off, man. Oh, Andy, we got to go catch these bluefish, bud. I don't know. Next time. How's that porgy? It's pretty good. Nice char, season. I love like anything out of that smoky soy thing you get with grilled fish with the with the tare. Switch. I love grapefruit on fish. This looks great, Andy. I think it's pretty tasty. Look at that, you man. You tell me though. Come on. Who could call that a garbage fish? The skin's nice. You really you let that kind of it, to slowly render and to crisp up properly. You know, I was watching old Joni Mitchell videos last night. Do you mm, like hold on. Love Joni Mitchell, but hold on. That bluefish is phenomenal. Yeah. I didn't even try yours yet. So look at that. Oh my God, that's, 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 so like a, soft. that's like a snapper. How much do you think a porgy is per pound? Cheap. I want a crispy skin, soy, a little bit of tang from the vinegar. I would squeeze some of the grapefruit over if you're into that. Delicate. You know, it's like flounder. Delicate. Yeah, you know what it is like flounder. It's delicious. Andy, we're gonna go fishing, I swear. I'm gonna bring you. I know the first time I might not catch it. forever. Any. No, you'll I, catch them. You know me, I get competitive. I just wanna know the whole setup. I wanna know the gear. I wanna know all the terms. Well, I you got some time. I'm just trying to plan my look, you know? Oh, That's Christ. I think there's like a really good Patagonia moment here. Dude, I'm geared out. You should see my I know, shit. Yeah, I have no doubt you are. I just need to make sure it's like. You're not ready, some, dude. Not at all. 
This bluefish is good. It's so good, right? It's They're both so good. good. Woo! Some raw garlic. A little garlic in there. We're all good for you. Keep the vampires away, bud. I know. What Brad did really right was go a little bit more gentler, kind of the medium heat, medium right. low. I went a little bit more on the medium high side, and then there's more risk for it to kind of for the skin to stick. Wait until the skin releases from the grates, right. and then trying to. That's do your the biggest best. thing with flipping a fish. Don't, Don't fuss with it. it. Yeah. Don't force it. But I think people should be grilling whole fish. It comes out cheaper than buying fillets. It's more flavor and too. It's more flavorful. It's the on bones. the bone. You're paying for the bones. Yep. Look for other fish besides the filleted out tuna, salmon, swordfish. Yeah. If you're a beginner when it comes to whole fish cooking, I don't think like salmon is the way to go. You want the smaller fish in general. I Absolutely. think like going so much with easier to handle. Porgy, uh, flounder. It's easier when, when they're more manageable. So I think that's the way to go. Being that not going to the office every day, you're not doing anything in the test kitchen no. or nothing like that. Wow. It's been, it's kind of cool. I kind of like it, being able to like go to a couple places, go fishing more often, get out in nature, get tuned into that and spend more time with my family has been amazing. So it has been a double-edged sword and you know, there's been a lot of pain and unfortunate things yeah. with this, you know, in the past few months. But also like any time, you know, it's bad. I do believe in positive and doing good with, with it and moving forward and, 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 and making the best of it. And, and you know, I've always been a, a champion of positivity and I've always gotten that vibe from you, yep. Andy, and and you know, the new folks that we've been chatting, you know, there's some really awesome people I'm excited to work with that have come on to Bone App and um, I'm excited to make some of the best content I think we ever I think could. so. I think it's like there's going to be a lot of tough uh, conversations and decisions and like we've been a part of them for the last few years, especially in the last few months. And I think as individuals and as a staff, uh, as a brand, we've been having to rise to the occasion and, and ask those tough questions. And I think we have to kind of evolve and be open and look forward to a, just a better next chapter, I guess. Absolutely, cheers to that, my friend. And next, let's go fishing. I want a proper fish. And then we'll cook it together, we'll celebrate it. I'll bring a bottle yeah, of Give me COVID hugs. Okay. Oh, it's a good one. You give good hugs. I'm pretty good. I'm stronger than I look. All right, get out of my house. All right, bye. You know what I wanted to do, Kev? I want to. I want to make. I want to learn how to make my. Own, I want to. I want to make my own charcoal. Is what I was gonna say. Knottsville, North Carolina. Hello. Uh, car insurance scam. I think. <laughs>